Hi, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Paul Gillen. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous production of the MIT Information Quality Symposium. Tony D'Onofrio is here. He's the Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of Technology at Truven Healthcare. Tony, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So to start by telling us a little bit about Truven, and then we'll get into your role. And we're going we're gonna to geek out a little bit here. We haven't in the last two days. That's rare for us in theCUBE, but uh, tell us about Truven. Well, uh, Truven Health Anal at Truven Health Analytics, we uh, deliver uh, healthcare analytic uh, databases and healthcare reference data to uh, every stakeholder in uh, the healthcare community. Uh, we deliver solutions for consumers of healthcare so that they can manage uh, their selections of healthcare plans and, and manage episodes uh, of healthcare. We deliver uh, applications for providers of healthcare. Uh, both at the clinical point of care that uh, provide critical information for making decisions on, on caregiving, and we provide uh, applications to uh, payers uh, of health care, uh, both government, uh, Medicare and Medicaid, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, uh, commercial health plans and large uh, employers uh, who uh, want to understand how to uh, best deliver uh, efficient quality care uh, to consumers of health care. And talk a little bit about your role as a CTO. Is, is it a visionary role, strategy role? Do you get involved in, in actual you know, implementation decisions, R&D decisions, all of the above? Yeah, I'd say all of the above. Um, uh, we're a, uh, what might be called a mid-size organization, uh, and uh, we've, uh, we're at about uh, 2,100 uh, uh, Truvenites, and uh, we, uh, we have to manage uh, the development of our software and our tools and our analytic methods, uh, and we have to deliver those day to day. Uh, and that's that's you know uh, you know that's a lot of work because we provide uh, uh, many products uh, across the spectrum uh, of product lines to those communities. Uh, but we also have to get ahead of the curve, and I, and that's an important part of my job, is to look at um, what are the opportunities that technology affords uh, uh, the healthcare community, and how can we uh, uh, extend and evolve our services uh, so that we can uh, offer uh, uh, or enable, I should say, the healthcare, all of the healthcare stakeholders, the ability to provide higher quality care to more people uh, in a more efficient manner. Okay, so you're an independent software vendor, essentially, in the healthcare business. Uh, you've got a, it sounds like a, quite a portfolio of applications. We do. Uh, uh, consumers, docs, and payers. Absolutely. And, and are, so are these largely bespoke? applications or you know sort of grouped in suites by each of those constituents or yeah they're, they're grouped in, in suites uh, we have product lines around uh, what uh, what we call uh, care management uh, which would be things like our care discovery product uh, which is for uh, uh, the providers of care uh, to look at the clinical quality of their care and to improve that over time uh, using uh, 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 data collections of their own data with benchmarks that we apply to it and analytics that we apply to it uh, to give them key uh, information to make those decisions of improving care. We also provide uh, uh, in the area of care management operational uh, applications like Action OI uh, that allows uh, the uh, folks in provider organizations who are uh, managing the efficiency uh, of the overall uh, operation as an enterprise uh, using financial data and other operational data uh, to understand the, the improvement of theirs using benches and comparing to each other and so on and so forth. And then on the uh, clinical side, on the point of care side, uh, we offer solutions like you know, Micromedics, which is, uh, uh, has a suite of uh, important uh, data referential pro uh, information, uh, such as uh, toxicology and, and, and uh, drug uh, interaction information and things of that nature that allows, uh, uh, when uh, uh, used at the point of care, uh, it allows clinicians at the point of care uh, to uh, make uh, you know, better decisions and uh, uh, make well-informed, evidence-based decisions on uh, giving care. And finally, for payers, we offer uh, we offer what we'll you know often consider risk management solutions uh, like Advantage Suite that provides uh, uh, analytically ready data uh, over populations uh, uh, regarding uh, the cost of their care and the efficiency of their plans. Uh, uh, to provide that care. One of the things about analytics that I think is interesting is, is companies, uh, organizations often find 
unexpected benefits. So they go in thinking that they're going to increase revenue. In fact, they find that their biggest payoff is in operational efficiencies. Are there any stories that you can tell of your customers uh, where they have seen perhaps unexpected windfalls from uh, applying analytics to their, their business? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, there are, uh, you know, we have many cases, uh, you know, where we have clients who have, uh, who have uh, accrued unexpected benefits, uh, you know, from uh, what, you know, from our analytics. Um, I, I won't name any uh, client Obviously, cases today. Yeah. Uh, however, we do, uh, we have in the area where we do risk management, uh, we have uh, many cases uh, where uh, our surveillance and uh, payment integrity solutions uh, have uh, delivered uh, information that has uh, allowed payer organizations uh, to uh, recover uh, uh, well into the tens of millions of dollars uh, per uh, period uh, of uh, reimbursement. So the benchmarking piece is interesting. So how did that come about? I mean, obviously, you have the chicken and egg problem there, right? So you had to have enough, you know, data to be able to even offer those benchmarks. There's also the, you know, the confidentiality and, and privacy issue. Can you talk about that a little bit, how, how you came up with that, that product and have successfully delivered it? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually a great question because, uh, you know, depth, uh, and uh, breadth of data is really important when you're when you're uh, providing analytics. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, we're fortunate because we, you know, uh, having been around a while as an organization, uh, we've uh, we've uh, been able uh, to pool uh, large collections of data uh, in such a way that allows us to look at individual. Uh, 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 consumers, uh, or in individual patients, if you will, over longitudinally over a long period of time. And, and to your point about privacy, uh, the, way, the reason and the way that we're able to do that is by um, uh, pooling those data and de-identifying those data. Uh, so uh, the important attributes uh, about uh, the episodes of care for those communities and, and all of the information that we have uh, is, uh, is de-identified uh, and is pooled in a way that allows these benches to be created uh, without uh, providing individual, uh, you know, uh, personal, uh, personally identifiable information. So, but nonetheless, well, even though you're anonymizing it, did, did you have to sort of work with the providers of that information and say, okay, we're going to do this, or you just kind of do it and ask forgiveness? Or yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, data rights management is uh, a critical capability for us. Um, uh, we uh, we actually uh, consider it, uh, you know, we call it uh, 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 supply chain management, the way a manufacturing organization yeah, okay. would. Uh, we work, uh, and, and, and those arrangements uh, can be complex. Uh, we have, there are variations on a the theme, uh, but long story short, uh, with uh, large uh, portions of, uh, of the communities that we serve, uh, we're able to make value arrangements with them whereby they allow us to utilize these data for benching, uh, and for aggregation and pooling, uh, and that benefits, uh, you know, the whole community, but including, uh, you know, uh, the direct participants in those arrangements uh, by uh, getting the benefits of those broader benefits. Uh, so what will I see? I'll, I'll see myself in, in context to a larger pool, and then there's presumably some granularity of that pool, some categorization, is that right? Yeah, um, you know, w what you would see, uh, uh, depending on your, you know, your use and in which, you know, what application you're using and what you're looking for, you know, what your role is. Um, if you were, uh, if you're an individual consumer using one of our consumer products, for, for example, for instance, you could look at the list of uh, actual, you know, uh, uh, you know, episodes, claims, if you will, uh, that you've incurred over the period that you've participated or your, uh, your employer uh, has participated in this, uh, in, in providing this application. Uh, or you could see uh, information uh, that aggregates that and uh, gives you uh, 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 some suggestions and, and, and analytical information about how you might approach, uh, you know, that condition. Um, so, so you would see both in that case. If you were the plan provider, uh, you uh, would not see granular data about the individual uh, uh, user, but you would see summary information about your population and, and summary cost and care information about that population. What about the payer? Um, uh, that's sort of the most interesting to me is, is I want to know how do I stack up against my competition essentially. So, okay, you're not going to do a head-to-head -head for me. Right. But what can you tell me? Yeah, uh, payer-to-payer comparisons are le less rich, you know, at this point. Um, 
It's hard. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's difficult. Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, we do have a view on it because we're providing uh, services to each of the payers. You have uh, a but white paper not, on but your it's website. Not you have it's a white paper on your website calling for price transparency. <laughs> right, and and uh, and we believe that that's critical. We, you know, uh, it, it's fair to say that um, uh, certain stakeholders in the in the process, especially on the payer side, are currently uh, they feel they're disincented to provide tr price transparency. Um, however, if you look at it in, uh, in the mid to long term, uh, I think the pressure will be there to do that. Uh, in order to uh, enrich their plans and attract uh, the most, uh, you know, uh, uh, the best mix of, of consumers. Gas stations price. have to do it, but yep. uh, insurance companies don't. Yes, that's right. Um, the, uh, I wanted to ask you about it. Uh, Farzad Bastashari was on from uh, Health and Human Services yes. earlier, and he was talking about his vision of a world in which every interaction between doctor and patient becomes part of a bigger database that contributes to the body of knowledge that furthers our ability to make smarter medical decisions. Now part of that depends upon companies like yours being forthcoming, I guess, with that information, anonymized, aggregated, however, but is there, do you see in the future that you will be sharing the kind of information that you collect with other companies like yours in the uh, sort of the pursuit of the greater good? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I think that, um, I think that as, uh, as the uh, industry develops and, and as uh, capabilities and Technology and data uh, data uh, interchange uh, move forward. Uh, that will be more the case than not. Um, I think in the very long term, uh, what we'll see is uh, uh, what uh, one of my colleagues, Donald George, and I were talking about. And I, and I like his term earlier. Um, as said uh, is information as a service, uh, and and the key uh, to unlocking providing information as a service uh, will be uh, managing that privacy in a public. Uh, way, ma managing that level of access uh, so that only aggregated or anonymized data can be accessed uh, in a uh, public setting, but, you know, uh, data can be privately drilled down on uh, now if, if, if the, you know, if the right access uh, makes sense to grant. That will require a standardization, a massive standardization initiative because companies like yours and like insurance companies will need to actually have a consistent set of data standards to permit this interchange. Isn't that right? Yeah, and, and the interesting thing about that is that the standards do exist today. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, very mature uh, and continually Im improving uh, standards for data encoding, uh, data semantics. Uh, you know, so on the on the admin data side or the you know claims data side, if you will, we, we you know we have ICD-9 going to ICD-10. On the clinical side, we have HL-7 uh, in various releases. Um, the, the, the real uh, challenge there, and what's, what's going to evolve rapidly, I believe, uh, given, the, given the need to uh, uh, become more efficient, uh, is the quality standards you know, uh, in those data and the uh, implementation standards. Uh, so, that, um, uh, so that certain, you know, for example, certain attributes absolutely must be present in all cases uh, and uh, you know, uh, won't be allowed to be fudged by putting certain data in a text field because right. within the confines of your system that that works for you in that in that context. It's easier That's to standardize the fields than what people put in the fields. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's a good, good way of uh, putting it. Now, um, you deliver your service, uh, your software as a service? Is it on-prem, both? How does that work? Uh, it's both, uh, but uh, uh, mostly and increasingly, uh, it's uh, software as a service. Uh, we uh, offer all the products that I uh, mentioned earlier and, and services around those uh, where we provide analytic consulting, uh, and the data management uh, for you know the indi individual uh, participants, uh, we provide that as a service and we host those. Um, that's actually very efficient for our customers and, f and for us. It's easy for us to manage the secure. Uh, it it's easy easier for us to manage privacy and protocols around the data uh, if we manage it and host it, uh, uh, as opposed to uh, you know doing it within the context and the confines of a customer or a customer partners. Um, you know, infrastructure, but we do that as well. So I wonder if you could talk about the sort of, you know, the, the database behind it. So we haven't really talked tech, but, but um, when you look at the, the delivery of software as a service, there's, you know, three companies come to mind. You got Salesforce, who just did a you know, monster deal with Oracle uh, as the back end. You got Workday, who I believe sort of does a homegrown dealio. And, and ServiceNow is another really interesting one. They got a, 
they got a single CMDB right. running on MySQL. I think they're moving to either, I think they're going to Cassandra. But anyway, regardless, yep. talk about your, your, your database architecture. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, I'm glad you asked that because uh, we're a little bit interesting that way. Uh, we, we, we are not uh, software as a service uh, in the same way that you would see Salesforce and service now, but in, in some ways we are, in some ways we're not, I mm -hmm. should say. Uh, so the way to think about uh, the way we uh, manage those data is uh, in a couple of uh, ways. Uh, one is uh, we, uh, we instantiate individual uh, uh, data warehouses or data marts, given these are business intelligence applications where you're doing analytic reporting over analytically ready data. Uh, we instantiate individual uh, marts for customers' uh, scope of data. Uh, and, and, and that's typical for the risk management uh, type products like Advantage Suite uh, and uh, account group reporting uh, and, and, and things that uh, really there is, a, there is a need from the customer perspective to have their drill down data and their data collection isolated. Uh, we do that in a shared uh, tenant way over uh, shared infrastructure or in dedicated infrastructure depending upon the customer's policy. But we instantiate in the same way, it's just there would be another instance. Uh, the other thing, as opposed to, you know, if you look at Salesforce, within a large instance of the infrastructure, they have multi-tenancy on an application layer within the database. So right. they have table sets that are, that which, are which you know, Which Ellison, of course, hammers them on, but now maybe right. they're going to a new model now. And, right. And, and so, so we have segregation. And Workday is probably similar. I don't know for sure. I think I they are. So. I'm not sure either. Uh, and, and, uh, and so we use Salesforce and we use ServiceNow, by the way. And, you know, and, ServiceNow and is awesome, isn't yeah, it? Great tool. Yeah, great tool. Great uh, tool. And, um, and we feel our tools are great too. And in the, in the, uh, in the uh, but that's the way we instantiate databases. We use, uh, 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 we use uh, commercial uh, platform components uh, uh, like uh, Oracle, Oracle Exadata in some instances, as well as uh, IBM's Cognos. Uh, and we uh, have integrating software and optimization software and custom reporting software around that in addition we have custom tools uh, to do the uh, data, uh, data acquisition management and delivery to those analytically ready and, data models. And how about all this, you know, for all this unstructured data, are you using, you know, starting to dabble in Hadoop? Are you, you know, moving yeah. in that direction aggressively? Uh, we're, we're moving in that direction aggressively, but uh, we uh, believe uh, firmly that it, you know, as with all new par uh, storage and retrieval paradigms or data management paradigms, it will coexist with relational database management uh, with other database management uh, approaches for quite some time to come. Kind of like PCs coexisted with mainframes, or uh, no, a little more equilibrium. No, I think kind of, kind of uh, like, uh, kind of like um, uh, uh, relational databases coexisted with file system access and flat yeah, file okay. data. Uh, you know, it never really replaced that. It, it it did replace, but inappropriately so in a lot of ways because it became a paradigm lock. It did replace hierarchical databases, yeah. inverted list databases, things like that. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have for a lot of right, applications. Right, right. It became <laughs> the only way to do things. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, Hadoop in that way won't replace a relational database source. Uh, where we're applying Hadoop, you know, to be specific about that, is uh, in the space where, and this is critical for the, you know, the development of uh, healthcare uh, quality and costs going forward, is where we're uh, advancing our, uh, our uh, capabilities and in, uh, integrating clinical data with claims and admin data uh, to provide richer analytics and more near real-time analytics, uh, we're employing Hadoop uh, because in that, uh, because the nature of the clinical data is much less long cycle adjudicated uh, you know, data. It's very lumpy, very volatile streams of those data in terms of time to come in. And uh, we basically feel that the distributed file si system approach uh, that Hadoop gives us gives us the uh, ability to basically create piles of those data uh -huh. in very efficient and ways function and pull it. right, right yeah. and pull piles of yeah. those data and apply analytics to them in a much more efficient yeah. way. Uh, interesting. And what, what database are you using there? Is it, is uh, we uh, we're uh, using the uh, HortonWorks uh, uh, distribution. So right, uh, Apache. Uh, so HortonWorks distribution and, and you, HBase or yes, uh, and we are um, uh, you know the, our view on uh, uh, on Hadoop and distributed file system in general is that. Uh, you know, we feel it, it should be a lean uh, uh, until we see otherwise. You know, with the Cloudera and, and, and uh, Oracle uh, Big Data Appliance uh, approaches, until we see otherwise or we get to that scale and we understand, uh, uh, you know, exactly where and how we're going to apply it and at what scale, 
uh, we're going to stay lean, you know, with our Hayes distribution, roll our own, you know, using Hortonworks. Uh, we do see, you know, a future where it very probably would coexist, where we would, uh, we would, uh, you know, uh, deploy the Cloudera or, or Oracle Big Data appliance where it made sense. But right now, it's it's something that you know a lean and mean distribution uh, uh, to allow us to figure out where we're going to take it is the best thing. So using a Apache uh, distribution, which is open source and, and free, are you actually uh, uh, engaging with the Hortonworks on a subscription basis at this point? Or yeah, what we're doing uh, with Hortonworks, which so you're, you're a customer of Hortonworks. We're a customer yeah. of Hortonworks, and and, uh, and and the good thing about that is it takes off the table. When you're rolling your own and dealing with the uh, open source distribution and, and so on and so forth, uh, it, and you're maturing your organization's operational and, and software development capability in using the tools, um, it really helps to have a partner who, uh, you know, give you a hand to hold, who's been there for just both uh, development uh, issues, where how do you optimize uh, your, uh, your implementation, as well as bite and chew issues, like what's the best way to deploy and extend your deployment, mm. you know, on your physical platform. It's great to have that hand to hold. Yeah, and those guys know do what that. they're doing. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Works, for those who don't know, spin out from, from Yahoo and guys like Arun Murthy who are you know, serious c committers to yeah. Apache Hadoop and, and what they're doing with Yarn. It's very interesting. All right, uh, so we're really getting into it now, and these guys yeah. are giving me the high sign. So, all right, Tony, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really a pleasure meeting y you and sharing your perspectives. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's uh, been a pleasure to be here. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. Paul Gillen and I will be right back after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts.